I am not woke, says Anthony Albanese on the front page of today's Daily Telegraph. It was a wide-ranging interview with Joe Hildebrand, the Labor leader promising to stand up to China, respecting people of faith and to advance mainstream values. For his reaction, let's bring in the leader of One Nation in New South Wales, someone who knows the bloke well, Mark Latham, joining me now from Sydney. Well, come in, Spinner, Mark. Are you buying any of this? No, no, Peter. Um, they'll be selling us that Harbour Bridge behind us uh, next thing for Albanese to say that he's non-woke. Um, you know, I must be the Easter Bunny to believe that. I mean, you've only got to go back a few days. This is a very strange piece of journalism by Joe Hildebrand because you've only got to go back a few days. When Albanese played the gendered language card, the wokest thing you can do in, in, in political debate to say it's politically incorrect to speak of Wong and Keneally as mean girls. Well, they were labelled that mm. by uh, a, a, a colleague of theirs in the Labor Party, the, the, um, the, the senator who passed away, Kimberly Kitching. So Albanese to hide behind gendered language is as woke as it comes. And then you come to all the other factors. Why didn't Hildebrand ask Albanese his views on the woke agenda? Uh, if Albanese was asked um, in the circumstance of where a seven-year-old boy goes to school and says he's a girl, is he a boy or a girl? Albanese would say he's a girl despite the biological science saying that uh, the boy is male. Um, if Albanese was asked about unconscious bias and cultural appropriation and critical race theory, all these things valid, he'd say, oh, yeah, they're, they're valid theories. Because you've only got to um, ponder the question, Peter, how has Albanese survived against the Greens Party in a seat like Grainler for 26 years? He survived by saying mm -hmm. that the constituency say, there, don't vote Green, I'm the woke one. Don't vote Green, I'm the woke one. That's what he has said at every election in his seat of Grainler in inner Sydney since 1996. So, no, I'm not buying that hard, yeah, look, Peter. I'm just not buying it. And, of course, we know he's trying to mop up the old Labor base, worried that they think he's too woke or too green. We know it was only a few weeks ago he said, look, we're going to have a republic, but not in my first term. Uh, he's put that out there, that he's very supportive of uh, uh, the Makarata agreement. He wants a treaty with Aboriginal Australians. All of that's there, but he's just trying not to scare the horses by saying it's on the sort of further agenda. It's my second term, God help us, or my third term. But these issues haven't gone away. They're still on the Labor Party platform, aren't they? Well, they are, and uh, they'll be implemented in government and much, much more. But in terms of the Labor base you mentioned, that's in Western Sydney. And at the time of the raging Tampa debate internally in the Labor Party in Canberra, Albanese described people in Western Sydney as racist because they objected to the queue, queue jumping of um, uh, boat people uh, sponsored and, and, and moved mm. around by people smugglers. He said they were racist to object to the onshore settlement of the asylum seeker numbers. So... Albanese's always had a sneering inner city leftist view of working people in places like Western Sydney. And, and then you go to the Hunter Valley, where he's got a safeguard mechanism to wipe out all the coal jobs. That uh, He's targeted 19 companies out of uh, 38 in New South Wales and the Hunter Valley for what Joel Fitzgibbon calls the equivalent of a carbon tax. They've got to pay extra money um, in, in lieu of um, too much uh, carbon emission. So if you're wiping out mm. working-class jobs in places like Muzzlebrook and Singleton in the Hunter Valley and you're sneering at people in Western Sydney as racist, well, that's as woke as it comes. And you've only got to study his record to know that front page of The Telegraph uh, today was written by some kind of strange press secretary in Joe Hildebrand instead of a real journalist. Yeah, it looked like a, the, the puff piece you want heading into an election, if you ask my view. But um, I played or played, showed some images at the top of the show, um, campaign posters for Christina Keneally out in the seat of Fowler. This is the seat she's been parachuted into. They've been marked up with the words bully. Now, that tells me there's a bit of disquiet in that seat about these allegations in relation to Kimberley Kitching, doesn't it? Yeah, everyone's talking about mean girls. Uh, people I know who aren't that interested in politics, uh, they know that expression, and, and it's true in life. Everyone knows a, a mean girl. Uh, everyone um, knows a woman in particular who's been badly treated by a mean girl, and that sums Keneally up to a, a T. So I'm not surprised in a, a very working-class place like Fowler, places like uh, Cabramatta, parts of, of Liverpool there, um, 
that they've got two major objections to Christina Keneally, that someone's been shoehorned in from Scotland Island uh, to represent this seat, which had absolutely no affinity with Western Sydney whatsoever, and that uh, she's now been revealed as a mean girl who treats other people really badly uh, in the scandal, the dreadful circumstances by which uh, Kimberly Kitching passed away after bullying and intimidation from the Labor Senate, Senate leadership team. So it's not surprising that mm. people aren't too happy about the election posters and many, many other things about Christina Keneally. Well, we'll see what happens. There could be a high profile independent, as I mused about the other day, that could emerge and that will absolutely take the fight up to her. Mark Latham, thank you as always.